Hello, and welcome to a new series on my channel, a sort of storytime series that I've entitled Tales from the Piz. <laughs> Now, I do a lot of reminiscing about 80s horror on this channel. The 80s gave us a plethora of horror movies that many of us consider classics today. But with the success of the new Scream, Scream 2022, Five Cream, whatever you want to call it, it got me thinking about the 90s and 90s horror, hence the flannel and the Halloween 6 shirt underneath. I also realized that there's probably a lot of you out there who are either not alive in the 90s, or were too young to remember that decade, the horror drought, and the impact that Scream had on the genre. The 90s were my formative years, the years that shaped the kind of person I am now, and even though I've always been a huge horror fan, the early part of the 90s is more defined for me by the music of that time. The Black Album, the Use Your Illusion albums, Pantera, and of course, Grunge. I know it's been said before, but unless you were actually there, it's difficult to truly understand just how dead the horror genre was in the early to mid 90s. In 92, Candyman was released. I remember critics liking it and hearing positive things from a couple of my friends who'd went to see it. It received sequels, of course, but it wasn't a runaway success and it didn't cross over to mainstream audiences. In 93, Jason Goes to Hell was released. I've told my story of going to see the film with a church youth group in a packed theater and how it's one of the high points of my childhood before, many times, so I won't regurgitate it again here. Jason Goes to Hell was panned by critics, did okay at the box office, but wasn't a crossover success. In 94, Wes Craven delivered A New Nightmare, a movie that I think we can all agree was ahead of its time, but it performed poorly at the box office. In 95, Halloween 6 dropped, and then quickly dropped again, right off the charts. The horror icons of the late 70s and early 80s were no longer profitable, and even when we were presented with the potential of a new icon in the form of Candyman, it did respectable business, but nothing more. Another story I've told before, but I will tell again here, because I think it's telling of not only the state of the genre at the time, but the perception of horror fans at that time. Art class. I'm on an old Apple computer exploring this fledgling new terrain called the internet. I'm looking for information on Halloween 6. My best friend is seated next to me, most likely scouring the net for something far more salacious. He peers over at my screen where a photo of Michael Myers is displayed and says, You don't really like that stuff, do you? I mean, those movies suck, right? My best friend in the world was glaring at me with a look of utter disgust. It was that stingy look a parent gives you when they're not mad, just disappointed. Only he was disappointed in me for looking at a picture of Michael Myers. I'd learned very early on in school first grade, maybe second, that horror movies were not everybody's cup of tea. It's Valentine's Day. I had bought, or my mother had bought for me, Valentine's cards with the Universal Monsters on them. We all exchanged cards during class, and afterwards, one of the other little boys came up to me holding the card I'd given him, a card with Dracula on it. He said thanks for the card, tossed it in my direction, and called me a word that I'd never heard before. Later, I asked my mother about that word, I remember her telling me that it wasn't a very nice word. He called me a freak. So right then and there, I learned to hide my freakiness and just pretend to be normal. Anyway, fast forward just one year after the incident in art class with my best friend. It's first period. I'm seated in either geometry or algebra two. I don't recall exactly, but a classmate begins telling me about a movie he saw over the weekend. He went into detail regarding the opening moments of the film, the terrifying phone calls a woman was receiving, threats of her being gutted by the creepy voice on the other end. The more he spoke, the more intently I listened. How did I allow this movie to slip under my radar? I'm a horror fan, after all. What happened? The next thing I knew, everybody was talking about Scream. My best friend, who was horror-shaming me just the year before, was now obsessed with the movie. The same internet on which I was looking for information about Halloween 6 and finding next to nothing, now all my friends were searching Scream and finding low-quality audio files and highly pixelated and long-buffering real-player clips from the film that they watched and listened to over and over again. All of a sudden, Scream was everywhere. Everyone was talking about it. It was making tons of money at the box office. Late-night talk shows were aping Ghostface phone calls. And what's your favorite scary movie? 
became the where's the beef of the 90s. These masks, which you could purchase from any retail chain for a buck or two, were now going for 25 or 30 bucks a pop. But the thing that sticks out for me the most about Scream's initial success is what it did for Wes Craven. Keep in mind the late 80s and early 90s had not been kind to the late horror master. Movies like People Under the Stairs, Shocker, Vampire in Brooklyn, and New Nightmare had not set the world on fire. Now Craven was being interviewed by Charlie Rose and having serious discussions about the genre and its impact on society. Craven became the horror master of the 90s. Just look at how many movies released throughout the rest of that decade and even into the early 2000s that were associated with his name. Wes Craven's this, or Wes Craven presents that, or they. Did Craven have any input on these movies? Probably very little to none, but his name drew people's attention, and that was because of Scream. But that kind of name recognition didn't end with Craven. It was extended to Scream's screenwriter, Kevin Williamson, who became the genre's go-to scribe, later pinning I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Scream 2. Williamson also used Scream's success to launch his own long-running television series, Dawson's Creek. Scream received one sequel before the end of the decade, which grossed over $170 million at the box office. In the wake of Scream, movies like the aforementioned I Know What You Did Last Summer and Urban Legends saw wide releases and big box office returns, leading to sequels of their own. Scream's success even revived an OG horror icon and the original Scream Queen herself with 98's Halloween H2O. Things had kind of come full circle. My buddy who was sneering at me for looking up Halloween 6 and 95 was now gung-ho about going and watching H2O just three years later. Scream's success was also seen at the video store. Video store shelves were flooded with an unending litany of low-budget Scream-style direct-to-video slashers. And I rented most of them. The quality of these movies ranged from god-awful to not bad to pretty good. I look back on 90s horror, particularly the Scream era, and I just get a warm feeling in the pit of my stomach. Although that could be the Taco Bell that I had for lunch today. But seriously, Scream made horror cool. It introduced or legitimized the genre to a lot of people. It revived not just the genre, but the career of one of its pioneering filmmakers and launched the career of its young screenwriter. It also served as a signal to all of us closeted horror freaks to let our freak flags fly. We could look upon those new to the genre because of Scream, with a little smugness of our own. Normal sucks. Thank you so much for watching the inaugural episode of Tales from the Piz. I hope you enjoyed my little walk down memory lane, and if you did, please drop a like on the video and share it. Please let me know your memories of 90s horror cinema down in the comments section below. Again, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.